Thank you, Ida. Thank you, church. Really, really good to be with you this afternoon. That's a great passage, isn't it? Really, really good passage. I, I've really appreciated speaking this out week after week. I think we need that constant reminder to put on the armour. The Puritan minister, William Gurnall, said we need to walk, work and sleep in this armour. And we do because the battle is relentless, isn't it? Sometimes even when we don't feel like it, to put on the armour of God, to remind ourselves of who God is and who we are in him is so important. Well, as Edith said, we are taking a bit of a break from our Battle Ready series today. But actually what we're talking about today is very, very much linked with that. We're talking about the importance of connecting in to a small group. And you know, when we talk about small groups, this isn't just an added extra for those who've got a bit more free time in the week. Because who has free time these days? It isn't just one more thing amidst all the other things that are vying for our time. This is critical. If we're going to grow as Christians, and really if we're going to stand in the very real battle that we face, then intentionally connecting into Christian community is vital. Stuart said last week, the spiritual battle is real, it's serious, it's warfare. And you know, wars aren't fought between individual soldiers, they're fought between armies. They're fought between armies of soldiers who will stand together, who are committed to one another, who get into the trenches and make sacrifices and fight for one another. Paul's encouragement about the armour of God is to the church, to put on the armour of God and to stand together. And if you're not keen on the language of warfare, think of penguins. So when I last preached about the importance of community, someone came up to me after the meeting and said they felt God speaking to them and giving them a picture of emperor penguins. It's a great picture. And you might have seen them um, in the wildlife documentaries. They all huddle together. The way they cope with the harsh environments that they're in is that they huddle together tightly in great groups. And they take turns moving from the outside where it's cold and it's harsh to the inside of the group to experience the warmth and protection of the group. And we know, don't we, that sometimes we can be in that place where we're giving out to others and supporting others and protecting others and speaking words of encouragement to others. But actually there are times, there are seasons of life where we need to be on the inside and leaning more on the support of others within the church. We need each other. We are made this way. God has wired us, designed us for community with other people. There is real kindness in this. So today we're going to hear three conversations about the community in the context of small groups. So we're going to talk first about how we build community. Then we're going to look at what it looks like in the ups and downs of life. And then we're going to focus on the power of being a community of people who are on mission together. That is where we're going today. So first of all, I'm going to invite Addy and Rochelle to come up. So let's make Addy and Rochelle feel really, really welcome as they come up. Addy, Rochelle, really good to see you both. Really good to see you. So you've both been part of chapter one. Um, over the past uh, semester. So chapter one is our foundational discipleship experience. And we see this really as the first step into a community here at King. So Addy, you've been part of our leadership team um, on chapter one. Just give us a flavor of what chapter one is and how it works. Okay. All right. Uh, chapter one is um, a discipleship class. Um, all disciples, no leaders, um, where we, we come together every week. Um, evenings we did um, during the last sessions. And when we come to look at the disciplines of being a disciple, you know, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? It's open to any Christian at any stage of their Christian work. It could be a new Christian. It could be a, someone who's been a Christian for um, a period of time. It could be someone just exploring Christianity. You know, chapter one is for us to come and under, understand the discipline of being a Christian. Jesus Christ said, and if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples, then you shall know the truth. So it's this continuity. We look at them as rhythms. You know, how do you continue in prayers? How do you continue in worship? How do you continue in serving your community and giving? Uh, so chapter one is basically that. Just coming to explore what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Great. Thank you, Eddie. And there are kind of small group sessions that you have together and then experiences that you do together as part of that. Great. Thank you so much. So Rochelle, you first came to King's last summer. Uh, June, I think, last year. You didn't know anybody at all um, in the church, but now you seem very, very much part of our church family here, which is great. We love having you here. 
Um, and you've been part of Addie's group in chapter one um, over the past semester. What part has chapter one played in helping you to find friendship and community here at King's? Well, as you said, I've met quite a lot of people. So it's played a, a massive part, um, along with the, sm- uh, the young adult events um, that Nicola puts on. So that's been really helpful. Um, and I think on a Sunday, sometimes it can be quite difficult to talk to people after church. So just having that extra day to um, connect with people, um, that's been really helpful. And having that safe space to kind of be vulnerable about your faith, um, it really helps to get below the surface and get to know people on a, uh, a deeper level. So yeah, it's yeah. played a really big part. And you feel that now you know people in the church. And you're yeah, connected got, got a good little gang going on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Good. So, Addy, you had this kind of diverse group of people, so people that were very new, like Rochelle, and then others who've been part of the church for many, many years. What do you think has been the secret to this group really kind of growing in their togetherness and sense of family over the past few months? Yeah. Um, even though, yeah, like um, Rich said, the, the group was kind, of, was kind of diverse in terms of um, age and your level of um, how long you've been a Christian, but we all shared a common story to start with. You know, we've all experienced God's love, God's grace, and uh, we still all have our individual stories to, uh, to, to tell. So coming together, looking at discipleship, you know, we kind of open up, we share our stories, our experiences, and then we ask questions, we contribute to the discussions, you know, nobody has the right answers. You know, everybody is invited, everybody shares their own opinion, and by Exposing ourselves to that vulnerability by opening up, you know, it, it creates an environment of trust where you know these people are like me. You can relate with, with these people, and then that makes people, you know, that makes people. You come forward, you say, uh, you request prayer. We pray for each other, and you know, the bond, you know, just becomes stronger. You know, as we share our common interests, our common love for God, and, and we, we become vulnerable to each other. Basically, there's nothing to hide. We are all just exploring how to be good disciples of Jesus Christ. I think so. The bond comes from that, from that vulnerability and openness, you know, to just put everything out there and discuss. It's really good. Thank you so much, Eddie. Really helpful. So one of the big parts of chapter one is everyone just shares a bit of their story. And and you're right, there's a vulnerability in that. There's a great leveler that happens in that. So yeah, thank you so much, Eddie. So Rochelle, just finally with you, what would you say to anyone who is weighing up right now whether to join a group? What would you say to people? So I'd say do it. Um, it can be quite nerve-wracking but there's a lot more people in the same boat as you than you think at first Um, and I'd say building that sense of community and committing to that it's one of the best ways to meet people and build your own kind of church family Um, so yeah have a browse online that the groups on offer see what fits your schedule and where you are in your faith and yeah I don't think you'll regret it so it's great thank you so much can we just thank Addy and Rochelle so good thank you guys So for me, one of the real joys of chapter one is that you see people who are very new to Kings connecting with people who've been part of the church for many, many years and just really, really connecting. And it's just been a real joy to see that. So if you're new to Kings or you just want a kind of spiritual MOT, I would encourage you to sign up for chapter one. We'll explain how to do that at the end. We're going to hear next from a group that have been together for a bit longer than that. So this is a conversation that I had uh, with Andrew and Becky in the week. We're going to watch this on the screen. And I just really wanted to get a flavour of what small group means to them. So let's watch this video together now. So I'm here with Andrew and Becky, two of our small group leaders. Um, I know that you guys have led small groups for many years, uh, different kinds of groups. And I know that many of those people in your current group have been part of your group, journeyed with you um, over the past few years. Just describe your small group. What's the heart and vision? Well, the vision of our group is really to have a group where we do life together. Um, We all come from different walks of life, but we come together and we share our lives with each other. Um, We've got a group where we can nurture friendship and community and opportunity really just to share the highs and the lows of life, our families and our children and all things in between, really. Nice. Yeah, so a few years ago, we started the group um, looking at a parenting book um, and it's led on from there. So we've got a real family focus and children are very much part of our group in the sense that we pray for them a lot um, and we pray for each other as we parent together and grandparent together, some of us. That's a real, real key part of our group um, that we focus on family. Nice. 
Lovely. So describe a kind of typical small group session. What does that look like for you guys? Well, a typical session that we meet together is generally very relaxed. Yeah. Uh, when people joined our group, we said that we'd be running a, a relaxed group so people knew that. Um, a group that really focuses on conversation, people getting to know each other, an opportunity where people can find out where people are at um, and feel comfortable in that. We generally will come together, ideally on a Wednesday evening, but you never really know who's going to turn up. It might be lots of people, it might be one person, so we kind of plan the evening around that. And what we really want is people to bring everything with them as they walk in the door, We're not kind of leave it on the doorstep. So with that, we will have an evening that generally will hopefully meet the mood of the, of the people. Um, sometimes we uh, will do a course. So we've done the prayer course by Greg, Pete Gregg. Um, but generally at the moment, we're really looking at um, supporting each other and having fellowship and praying and generally just being there for each other in this time. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I think at the moment, um, a key focus of our group is just spending time together. Um, and particularly um, in January, evenings weren't really going to work. Um, so we just did lots of Sunday afternoon walks. Um, so parents, children, dogs, um, anyone else you wanted to invite, um, going for walks together and just having time together. And over the next term, um, we're going to ask our group to just help us really. Um, and we're, gonna, we're able to commit to leading one evening, which will be a Wednesday night each month. And then the rest of the group are going to chip in with other things that they want to organise, um, get-togethers, walks, games, afternoons, whatever anyone fancies. Um, and the main focus is just that we're together and spending time together. Yeah, I like that. So relaxed, informal, yeah. just kind of meeting people where they're at and, and doing mm. life together. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I know that for both of you, actually, what's really, really important to you, something that is really on your heart, is about people kind of connecting and intentionally connecting. And perhaps people that have been part of the church family for, for many years... Mm but who are feeling a bit disconnected from church life, being intentional about connecting back into small groups. Why is that so important to you guys? Um, so small groups are really special to both of us. Um, I think it's fair to say that I probably wouldn't be in church now um, had it not been for the welcome I received from a small group about 17 years ago when I first arrived in Wickham and didn't know anybody. Um, so I wasn't around a lot at weekends and um, I was invited along to a small group and just found real friendship and connection there that helped me to stay um, part of the church and to grow in my faith. Um, so for me, on a personal note, it's, it's really important. Um, and I think when you've lived that experience and been blessed in that way, it's only natural that you want to see other people um, having the same experience. Um, another thing that we have to mention in connection with small groups is that we actually met each other in that small group. Um, so, <laughs> so it's um, they, small groups definitely have a special place in our hearts. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. I mean, and also from my experience of church, there was a time when, um, as a, as a couple and as a family, felt quite disconnected from from things that were going on and and quite lonely. Um, the children were quite small at the time and. We found that we needed to reconnect. We needed to be intentional uh, to connect with the, the greater body of the church and what was going on. So we actually sat down and said, how are we going to do this? How are we going to really work on feeling a part of the body? Yeah. Um, so we decided that we had to be intentional and really step out and get involved with a group properly. Um, I think in the end, we actually ended up running a group because that we found that worked with us and it was something that we enjoyed doing. Yeah. Um, so in then, then from being not in a group properly, we kind of really got involved in a group. Um, it came at a cost um, with small children at the time. We had to organise babysitters. Um, when life was crazy, it meant that we had to kind of plan things and but get into it. But we found we got so much more from the church and the community that we're part of because we invested in it. We, we stepped out, we invested and put time in, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and made it work and from that we know that we're here now running another group because we just know it's the right place to be but we found out that you just have to kind of put the effort in as well yeah, yeah. I think as well um as leaders you're in the privileged 
privileged position that um, you can extend the, an invitation to join you, um, whether that's through the sign up process or um, a personal invitation. Um, and um, we've um, got an example of each of those situations where people have joined our group um, and it's been a real blessing to the group that they've come along um, and I think a real blessing to them. Um, so one lady hadn't been part of a group for a long time um, and was really brave and stepped out and signed up um, and, and came along to our group a few years ago now um, and she, need, she needed a bit of encouragement, um, but she's really enjoyed being part of it. She was able to join us in that way. So it's just really great to see that happening. Um, another example from more recent times um, is one Sunday, I just felt that um, God really wanted me to invite this particular couple to join mm. our small group. I'd seen them that Sunday morning um, and I just felt like he put them on my heart. Um, so I was a bit unsure because uh, they were well-established people in the church and I didn't really know what they'd think mm. about me inviting them to join us. Um, but actually it turned out, of course, to be um, exactly what they needed and they were really touched to have the invitation and they're now fast forward a few months and they're, they're part of our group. Um, so I think um, it's just when you've, when you've lived those experiences and been blessed by them and seen others blessed by them, you want to encourage other people to get involved and to yeah, step yeah. out. Yeah, and there's power in that invitation, isn't there, that personal invitation? Yeah, yeah I it's think good. so. Yeah. You talked um, earlier on about this group kind of going through the ups and downs of life and that's what small groups are about. Um, and we know, don't we, that life can be like that. There's the kind of high kind of mountaintop moments where things are really good. But then we also go through those seasons, the kind of valley seasons where life is really hard and where, where it hurts. What have you seen and what have you learned about um, the importance of community and friendship, perhaps in some of those harder times of life? I think, to me, uh, this question is quite a simple one in the sense that being in a small group is essential, really. I don't think there's any other way of putting it. I think um, as we walk through life as a, as a Christian, we get f so much thrown at us. And, and some of those things are big. And, and we're not, I don't think we should have to try and deal with those things on our own. I think it's biblical to say that, you know, we need to put Christians around us and we should do it with others, really. Mm. Um, we can't face these massive mountains in front of us. We've got people around us to get yeah. through them. Uh, when you're tired, people can pick you up and carry you almost. And I think a small group can do that through prayer, through support. I mean, one thing that we've experienced recently is in our group, everyone had different skills and abilities and characteristics. So one person can be amazing at providing food. One person can provide loads of prayer or real spiritual insight. Mm. And, and everyone can bring their strength to a situation. You know, you're not facing a situation on your own. You're facing it with 10, 12 people. Mm. And, we, and, you know, in a group that is able to communicate, you can open these problems up to a group. Yeah, and you don't have to deal with them on your own. Yeah. Um, the situation is still there, but you're not having to struggle and, and go through it, um, which, you know, we all have faced problems in our lives. You know, they're going to be there. Yeah. But being a part of a small group means that you can bear them better yeah, and you can good. pray into them. When you can't pray, someone else can pray for you. Yeah, um, and we've definitely experienced that personally and seen it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think it all comes back to um, our heart for the group being to do life together. Um, whether that's in the good times or the difficult times and like Andrew says to carry each other through them as much as, as much joy to be had as well um, in sharing really good times together and really really sort of celebratory, celebratory times um, as there is to be strength to be found in sharing really hard times together. Mm. That's family isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Thank you so much to uh, Andrew and Becky um, for that. See, the trouble with highlighting a group like that is that you do that and then everyone wants to be part of that group. But they, they would be the first to say that their group is not perfect. It's full of imperfect people and it's not perfect. But what I do like about that group is that it seems like people in that group are playing to their strengths. So I know that there are people in that group who have been through and continue to go through some really, really tough times right now. 
But what the group have done, which is great, is that everyone's using the spiritual gifts that God has given them to bless the others within that group. So some are offering practical support, some are praying, some are offering encouragement. Um, And it's wonderful. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul writes about the church as a body. So in verse 18, he says, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. And then in verse 26, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. And this is what it is, isn't it, to be part of the body. People using the unique gifts that God has given them to bless the body, bless the rest of the body. And that close connection between the people, that means that if one part of the body is hurting, then the rest of the body hurts too. So I want to ask you really, do you have that? Are you part of a community where you are known and where you know others? Are you using the gifts that God has given you in the context of a small group to bless other people in the church? See, in a church of this size, I know there'll be people right now who, for whatever reason, are feeling disconnected. That might be you today, that you're feeling disconnected from church. That, you might be, have been in the church for many years and still feel disconnected. Or it might be that you're, you're relatively new to the church. But all sorts of things can pull us away from community. And the enemy thrives on disunity and disconnection. We're so much easier to pick off when we're not connected to other Christians. Stuart said last week, there are people who were once part of this church who are not here today because they've been taken out in the battle. And Becky said, didn't she, that if it wasn't for her small group 17 years ago and the welcome she had as part of that small group, she probably wouldn't be in the church today. We have to be intentional with this. Andrew talked about intentionally stepping back in. We don't tend to drift into deep community. We need that intentionality. So if you know you're in that place right now where you're feeling disconnected from church, I just want to pray for you. I'm not going to ask you to identify yourself or to stand um, or anything like that. And there's no condemnation. There's no judgment. I just want to pray for you because I believe God wants us to be connected in to the family. So let's close our eyes. And you can do that at home as well if you're happy to do that. And I want to pray. Jesus, I thank you that you are building your church here. You're building your church. And you've placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as you want them to be. And that means there's a place and there's a purpose for all of us. And so I want to pray for anyone who's feeling that the sense of disconnection from the church family right now. I, I pray, Lord God, that you would help us. Help us to connect back in, Lord God, where there's grace needed, Lord, give us grace. Where it's about disappointment, Lord, help us to see you again clearly. Where we need to prioritise church over other things and stepping back into small group over other things, Lord, give us real wisdom in that. I pray that you'd help us in this. I pray you'd help us to be a family that love each other really, really well. Jesus, you said that this is how the world will know that we are disciples, that we'll love one another. Lord, help us to do this really, really well. And I thank you, Lord, that you've adopted us into this family. Lord, help us to be part of it. Where we're disconnected, help us to step back in. And I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, for our final conversation today, we're going to look at what it means to be a community on mission together. So I'm going to invite Victor to come up. Let's make Victor feel really, really welcome as he comes up. to see you. Yeah. Good to see you, Victor. So, uh, so Victor, so in the past, I know that you were part of a church in Brazil um, that was built around cell groups that intentionally reach out to people who are outside the church. Um, just to set a bit of context here, just give us a bit of a flavor of the scale of what you were part of in Brazil. Sure. Yeah, our church in Brazil is called Central Baptist Church uh, in a city called Belo Horizonte. I you know it's difficult to, to say. But uh, it was founded in the 1960s, and for four decades, the church, was, the church life was based around the temple. So Sunday services and Bible course and these things. Uh, but then the, in the late 1990s, the Lord led the leaders through this uh, time of, of you know, sorrow and, 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 and prayers about you know, what to do with the church that was not doing, doing very well. Then God gave some specific vision to the senior pastor about 
the lost around him really in a very bad situation, like really definitely lost if nothing was, was done about that. Uh, in the spirit, there were some, some specific prophecies to, to the church uh, that confirmed that the church should transition into the, this vision of compassion and, and multiplication through cell groups. And so this transition started in the year 2000. Uh, the church members were trained in, in the early 2002. The first uh, cell groups started and the result was just exponential growth. For that, that I was part of, because I, I came to Christ through through the cell groups in 2006. I didn't meet my wife there, but she was in another group, and I eventually stole her to mine. <laughs> yeah. Good strategy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so so in terms of uh, updated numbers, I checked that today uh, the church has roughly 15,000 people. Nearly 20 yeah. years later, the, the or, 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 or the. The, this movement uh, across 2,000 cells in nine sites in this metropolitan area, some church plants in, plant, uh, in, in all the regions uh, of Brazil. And not only that, I think most in, impacting part is that we helped and we equipped all the churches that got interested about this revival there and, and like the order of thousands of churches in, in Brazil and 100 churches in Europe already in, in 13 countries. So, yeah, it's been a, a blessing and all, all came from, from the Lord, really. Amazing. So exciting to hear. So kind of heart conviction for the leaders and then a change in, in strategy and then reaching out and then exponential growth. And now, and now you're starting to see that in, in other nations, too. So the Lord brought you here with your family, which we're really pleased about. Love that you're here. And you started a small group in the church about a year ago. And it had the same kind of heart as this, to build this core of Christians with a heart for reaching out um, and then to invite people along who don't know Jesus. And a a really, really simple format for your meeting. So just that you would eat together, that you'd worship together, you'd open the Bible together. So how is it going? What have been some of the highs and lows over this past year? Yeah, it has been a great joy in in the very beginning. It was just me and my wife inviting known Christian friends that we met in the first years in High Wycombe. Uh, but then everything changed when, when, once new, new friends from, from church joined because the beginning was a bit inconsistent as non-Christians are not as committed as, as, as Christians, right? So the, the frequency varied a lot. Uh, but then when we had this new core team, you know, joining the club, like Eat and, and Anna there, or maybe others I cannot see. But yeah... Was, everything was, was more pleasant, more pleasing, you know, people praying for us as well, not only us, for, for other people, and, and this really sense of support and, and working together because these people also had the same heart for, for the lost. So it was, was amazing. Good. And in terms of, of highlights, I think we can say that the, 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 the amazing thing for, for our own faith is when we see other people coming, right? Yeah. Uh, as a part of our prayers and, and as a result of that. And and we had nine visitors in this five months uh, coming to our socials. The challenge now is to bring people from the socials into the regular meetings where they can properly hear the word and, and, and believe. Yeah, good. And all the, all the highlights to, to ourselves is that the, I can tell that our sense of brotherhood and, and even our relationship with God, I think, has been or have been strengthened uh, like it, it, it would not happen at the same level, if the group was close to ourselves. Sure. So I think, I think that's a three-fold thing. You know, we, we share the gospel with others, but in the same time, we grow in God and we grow in our, in our community. Yeah. And our kids also grow they're, they're together with us. They're learning, playing. Uh, they have a, a separate activity for them every time. And it's a bit noisy sometimes. You know, it's difficult to fit, but, but it's been fun. Really good. Really exciting. Um, I know that you've got a massive heart for this. We've chatted a few times about this. Um, you've got a, a really big heart for reaching out and making disciples um, and seeing Jesus' commission to go and make disciples, to see that realised. So I want to give you a chance to, to really to dream big. So what would you love to see for your own small group, that, but then also for perhaps other groups like it in the church? Yeah, well, uh, my big dream is, is quite simple. Is is 
to have just one of my friends come to, to Christ, you know, rescued from hell, baptized and making disciples himself. Uh, but because I know, thank you, because I know that this, or the nine friends uh, of this core team in, in my group, they also share the same heart and, and vision. It's not unreasonable to expect that not only one my friend, but their friends, so 10, 10 or the friends coming, coming to a group. Yeah. And if that happens, we eventually have to multiply. And if we keep multiplying, this group of people, of, of 10 people, will turn into 20 people in two groups next year. So then 40 the other year, 80, 160, 320, 640. And if you do the math 10 times, you get to 10,000 people. Sure. You, you can check that later. <laughs> it, it's impressive, but it does, because we're, we're focusing one person at a time. So good. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's it, that's it. Uh, regarding the, the, the other groups, it's, it's difficult to tell how other people should operate, right? Because it's not about how you do your group, how you do your church, it's about why you do that, you know, and, and only God can put these things in, in people's hearts. So my... My, my dream for, for this church, actually my, my con- conviction for, 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 for it, since I, I joined the church and read the, the vision booklet, is that the, the same sort of lamentation period and re- consequent revival that happened uh, among or around home groups in the early church yeah. throughout history and more recently in countries like Brazil, uh, South America the continent, I know. Uh, and Korea, South Korea, China, and, and, and other places, the same thing can, can happen here. And, and, I, and I feel and I see these things happening inside individuals, you know, inside the leadership. And, and I know that these this things are coming. And eventually, the prophecies that were given to, to kings will happen. And my interpretation is, is quite clear. So I actually brought that. You can check in your booklet. Uh, one of the prophecies said that, uh, we will become, King's Church will become a torch from which lights, uh, or cell groups as I interpret, will be lit on all the hills around High Wycombe, bringing men and women to salvation and deliverance and the fullness of the Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And this other prophecy I like the most says that God will cause a breakthrough in evangelistic potency and fruitfulness through cell groups. And then will be a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's very clear. I don't know about you, but and there will be an influx of rich and poor encountering God as a result. And this is already happening, uh, as you know, in, in, in these other ministries. And finally, we'll become this church of thousands that surrounds and saturates how we come with with the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So good, isn't it? <laughs> Genuinely, genuinely, I, I really love the challenge that you bring. I, lo- I love chatting with you about this because I know this is so, it's so important for you. And, and when you talk about making disciples, it gets me excited about making disciples as well. So thank you so much um, for all that you just brought. Can we thank Victor again? Thank you so much. So we've seen just a glimpse uh, today of some of the groups that are available. So here is the question to you. Are you part of a small group? Where is God calling you to connect in right now? I hope you've been inspired um, by some of what we've heard today. Perhaps for some of you, actually, you're thinking that you'd love to run a group. Perhaps there's some inspiration that's come about that. If that's you and you're a church member here, I'd love to talk with you about this. Do, Do come and talk to me. But for all of us, we are in a battle. But if you are a Christian, you've been adopted into the family of God. He has made you for community. Do not allow yourself to drift. Whichever group you're going to be a part of, let's get connected in. Amen? Amen. Either. Thank you so much, Rich.